I'm going to get involved with the Texans. I think they win the division here on the road, and that also would come with a, a pretty big upset on the bottom of the screen there with the oh. Titans and uh, Ryan Tannehill at home. We've got a squad ride sweep. Let's fucking go, boys. How about that? How about the magic? So, Ron, we'll be seeing, brother. You were a terrible coach. Uh, we are in the same spot now that we were in four years ago. Um, if not, maybe even worse. All right. And then, yes, yeah, so a five guys bang. How about the Jets? 200 to win 2200 bucks what do you say i'll tell you what this screams to me like i think quorum still gets his yards but this square screams to me there's gonna be a big run early in the game from michigan and you're gonna look up and be like oh surely it's quorum no it's probably gonna be donovan edwards Oy. what is, is that is that from bro, your camera I don't know. these tiktok cameras bro they be getting me yeah there it is <laughs> Squad rides are perfect in the new year. Let's fucking go. What's going on, chat? Happy BTL Wednesday, episode 405. Peace. As always, hold the fry. Joined by your two hosts, Krabs and Javon. Presented by Picket Sports. If you're not tracking your bets on Picket Sports, what are you waiting for? Go make the move today. Free to download. Could not be easier to use. Clean UI UX. Go check it out. I promise you're going to keep using it. All right. Syncs up to your books. Tracks everything. All right. Clear as day. Super easy. Transparent. Go check out. Pick it for yourself. Use promo code Javon. Why don't you now? Okay. Um, and Javon, how about that squad ride W at plus chick last night, brother? Let's go. Oh, go to muted. Back, 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 back. Oh, we're back. so back. How about yeah. that squad ride W at plus chicken last night? Let's go. Sure. Crispy little plus 160. Yeah, wow. surely uh, every minus 200 always wins on the ice, right, chat? Shit. Sure. I bet. Um, when is the Super Bowl podcast drop? That will be dropping Thursday night or Friday morning so that you guys have something to watch on Friday with no streams as we head out to Vegas. Okay, so stay posted. We filmed it late last night. All right, we're working on it. We got to get our... Uh, are people crafting that final puppy up and then we're going to move and post that probably late Thursday night. Okay. Uh, plenty of winners to be found there. Um, and if you guys need Super Bowl plays, we're going to use that podcast mainly for the Super Bowl winners. Sure. We'll talk about it a little bit before we go tomorrow, uh, but definitely want to use that podcast. If you guys are trying to craft up some bankroll bombs, plain and simple. All right. Um, Cohen's cake coming in hot, giving out a sub bang to the community. Let's go Cohen cake. Sure. You can. We got Lemba. Coming in hot, giving out a subby to dig that. Love to see that. Let's go, Lenny. Hope you're doing well. Hope you cash yesterday, my man. Um, Javon, squad ride Ws. We don't see a lot of plus 170, plus 160 uh, squad rides. Um, but when you put a profile picture or a background picture up there like that uh, with that beautiful red hair, of course it's going to smack. Are you kidding me? Uh, my red bearded friend here, although that's probably the reddest hair I've ever seen. Coming through at plus 160 for the boys. Absolutely electric cash. I hope you guys tailed. If you're not tailing the squad rides, they are 19, 7, and 2 in the new year. Let me repeat that real quick. 19, 7, and 2. You guys can crunch the numbers on that percentage. All right, do your W math. But that's pretty damn good, if I can say so myself. Who else is giving that out for free? Same time, same place every single day. And who else is letting chat pick the winners? No one. Okay. Tell your friends, tell your buddies, share the live, and tell them to go follow us on YouTube as well. Tell them to subscribe. It helps more than you guys know. It takes three seconds to go over there on your phone and subscribe to our YouTube page. That's all we're asking. We're not asking for money. We're not starting a dub club. All right, just go subscribe to the page. It's that simple, all right? Um, all right, let's get this cake-ish. Um, I guess not too cakey. We both went three and two, but not good enough on the Sharp Report, Javon. St. Jeff's, talk about an absolute blue ball fest. Um, yeah. They looked unbelievable in the first half. They look great. Everything I talked about, St. Joe's was doing. They were pushing the tempo. They were controlling the pace. And they were winning. They look great. And they got outscored like 60 to 40 in the second half. They actually scored more points in the second half than they did in the first half. But they couldn't guard a parked car. I even saw the guy on Dayton, Javon, to close the game out. Hits like a half-court three. They couldn't miss. Unbelievable. But your Wake Boys came through. Talk about that. Ah, they won by 30. Damn near. Sure. Nominated that entire game. Uh, so, yeah, that was, that was the greatest bet ever, potentially. But People good to see them finally uh, finally mucking on the road. I'm excited. Sure. Big time win. We got Ron coming in hot, giving out a subby. Cohen Cake dropping another subby. 
for the people. Love to see that. We got a hype train, folks. Let's keep that thing moving. Keep that thing grooving. Clemson, plus six and a half. My goodness, keep the points. You don't need them. What a game there. from the boys. Um, they play great. That's the Clemson team I've been waiting for. That's why I've been saying they have value potentially in the tournament if they can make it there. They're going to pull off a couple more of these regular season wins in a row. Job's not done yet. Job's not finished. But I like what I'm seeing out of that Clemson team. Circled them before the season as, I guess, kind of a dark horse. Um, really started out slow. But a lot of game left. A lot of season left. Plenty of time yeah, but- for Clemson to make some noise. Um, Houston. Somehow did not find a way to cover that game. I think they won by, you know, somewhere in the teens. Yeah, like, it is what it is. Yeah, somewhere close. <clears throat> Choked at the it's end. Teenage. Was always the first half. But, yeah. yeah. Late melt the job. Half. Don't usually get those from Houston. Don't usually get a late melt job. But did this game, so I was pissed. It is what it is. Cannot win them all. If we did, we'd be retired. And we're not. Okay. We got New Mexico and Wyoming overs hitting now. That one was, was cool. That was a short um, It was never Wyoming. It was always the over in that game. Uh, plenty of points. San Jose State somehow, some way did not come through. They got obliterated at home. Can't make it up. And then Air Force maybe put up the worst half of all time in the first half and then crawled back in the entire game. I don't even know why I kept watching it because they never had a chance to actually make the full comeback, but they almost did. Um, and then they lost by like 13. So all that matters, guys, is the Flyers on there. They came through a plus chick, and then we both swept our prize pick squares as well. It was never Kaloa hitting a three. Okay, love to see that. Let's go ahead and move and groove. On to, where do we want to go? King of the board? Sure. All tied up. Javon. So you're saying there's a chance. Could he toot yeah. for the first time this season? We will see. All right. So I've got three plays left. You've got two. And we've got two BTLs left, including today. So probably not going to be a Friday show, right? We're traveling out there. Got to make sure we get our king of the board plays in uh, before that. Short week. All right. We're on a short week. It's like we have a Thursday night football game. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Um, Chat. Make sure you guys stick, uh, you know, stick with this. Keep up with the uh, king of the boards because these are some of our best plays. Although we haven't shown it yet this uh, week, I think we have some check marks that are green in our future. I can see it. All right. Yep. Um, w is. Let's go ahead and hop into these steam crabs. We'll keep this one quick because we have a lot of games today. But I'm trying to get mad. Good to run that shit. Armando Bacots running the ACC. Sure. The ACC runs through him, right, Javon? I guess that's what you get when you say some stupid shit like that. You lose outright at home in your next game to Clemson. Okay. Man, this one felt sweet for me. I don't know. I find myself just hating Duke and UNC at the same time at this point. Grew up kind of rooting for Duke. I've just kind of grown to hate both of them. And I just root for the teams who don't get overhyped for no reason. Um, Look, UNC is not bad. UNC is going to make the tournament, and maybe they'll make a run similar to Michigan last year, like a revenge tour. I don't know. But all I know is you can't be saying the ACC runs through you and then losing outright to Clemson, all right? The basketball gods do not appreciate that. Now, I do appreciate his comments after the game. He talked about they had a bad week of practice. They actually stopped practice halfway through. They had a bad shoot-around before the game. Players were showing up late to the shoot around. What are we doing? How entitled can we be? How unaware can you guys be? You're potentially trying to win a national championship and you're showing up late to the fucking game. What are we doing? No wonder why they lost. And I put this on the cop, right? He's a team captain. If the ACC runs through you, brother, you got to keep your boys in line. Get them there early. What are you doing? You've been there for 10 years. You're telling me you don't have any control on this team? You can't say the ACC runs through you if you can't get your boys and teammates to show up for the game on time. Plain and simple. Yeah, which, I mean, he, he played well last night. Got to give him that. But that team, you, you can't come out and say that and then lose outright at home to a, a desperate team and a team who's been vastly, I don't know, underperforming really the entire conference season, can't close the game. And now they go on the road and they do it in your house after you just win your uh, your Super Bowl with UNC Duke and that rivalry over the weekend. We got to be better. I'm not complaining because I love to see it, but you got to be better. The basketball gods don't like comments like that, all right? They're sick pups up there. They do not appreciate talking about the ACC and you dominating it when you haven't done anything in it, when you've been there for college for 10 years, okay? Um, Let's move, all right? We can talk about our wagons on this beautiful Wednesday, and then we'll hop into the BTL Sharp Report for today and give you guys some winners. How's that sound? Uh, We got W comments coming in. Dream Warriors gassing up my guy, Ron. Sure he can. 
Um, I'd like to give a shout out to Ron. Thank you so much. Appreciate the love. Hope you hit all your bets today. Have a blessed day. That's what I'm fucking talking about. That's the energy we need today. All right. Um, Dubs. Let's go ahead and talk about our wagons. I'll get it started off here real quick. Um, I'm going to talk about a wagon that I hopefully jinx once again today, Javon. I'm going to talk about High Point, the team with the longest win streak in college basketball right now. Okay, they are on absolute fuego. This High Point team is really good. We've talked about them towards the beginning of the season. Keep an eye on them. They're nice. And now they're sitting at 20 and four with the longest win streak in college basketball. Okay, I've got a feeling that that win streak ends tonight, Javon. And maybe I'm trying to utilize this segment to my advantage because every time I talk about a team, they lose in their next game. Uh, I think High Point is a wagon. They deserve, you know, all the respect that they're not getting, and they deserve more credit because they have 20 wins and four losses at this point. I don't care what conference you play in. That is unbelievable, and you deserve props. You did. Now, with that being said, they've got their hands full tonight against a Nashville team at home that is starving for a Q1 win here, um, a big-time win that they need to stay relevant in this conference after a really slow start. So it's going to be the Pember show, right? It, maybe he's just a second-half player. I don't know, but – um, him and his team have started to get going here down the stretch um, and played much better in the second half of the season compared to the beginning. So um, I kind of like the way that team is trending, right? And I'm going to take a stab at so hopefully uh, you know, beat this way. That would be huge. I would love to see them go down today, and I will have coins fading. Grabs fading his wagon the same day, minus 500 cash. But yeah, we'll see if uh, Trent gets involved. That would be hilarious with uh, with High Point today, just like you did with the Oilers yesterday. But shout out uh, the boost for McDavid to have a point and the Oilers to win because that was a, a good look too while we're on the win streak topic. Um, but yeah, I'm with you there. Then And yeah, Mike was definitely kind of cookie. We'll get that fixed in a second. Take me to uh, my wagon, Goots. Putting tonsils on the boys. The Cal Golden Bears can't really say much uh, or really much about a team that's a wagon when they're sitting in nine and 13, but part of it's been because they're not really healthy and now they're kind of getting healthier. They're playing, they're more comfortable. Fardaz looks a little less scared out there. He's playing a little more aggressive like we're seeing in these videos. It used to be just kind of Fardaz and Jalen Tyson, which still majority it is for this team, but you got guys like Jalen Cohn, which Krabs magically spawns in the second I say his name. Keontae Kennedy, both yeah. look uh, both look pretty comfortable now. So they're actually starting to give somewhat of a supporting cast, which is why they've won four out of five games. And they're playing, you know, teams that they can really bang with and I guess the bottom of the, the Pac-12 there. So they're going to be competitive, especially at home, which is why a team who's uh, starting to play uh, pretty decently themselves. And they have Bronny James, who's looked like Stockton the past couple games and is really looking comfortable. Uh, yeah, they're dogs going on the road. That should go well. USC should be a free lay piece tonight, I bet. Should be a free lay piece, I bet. And I did not expect to see a 9-13 and 13 Cal team as a wagon, but they've been playing like it. you got to tip your cap. They're healthy, like man. playing much they're better healthy. recently. They're healthy. They've got some studs on that team, just like your guy, uh, Jalen Cohn, who you were talking about. I'm all in. I'm with you. And are you going to be taking your Cal Bears against USC tonight as a favorite at home? Yes, I will be. Dubs. Absolutely. Love that. Um, looks like we're both taking a bet um, in the games involving our wagons. We'll see how it plays out. All right. Hopefully Cal gets a dub, and hopefully my wagon high point uh, takes a fat out for the first time in two months. All right. Crabs, I'm surprised you didn't say Dayton is your wag. Yeah, Devin, I'm probably too hurt as of right now. Um, you know, I was thinking about pulling up that clip of the guy hitting the half court shot at the end um, to put them up by 40 points or whatever the fuck they won by. But I didn't have it in me today. I'll be honest with you. I didn't. We got Pax picks coming in hot. We're so back with the resub. Sure we can. Six months. Let's make it 12 in a couple. All right, Beast. Um, two wagons. High point and cap. Are you with me today? Fading my high point wagon? Or are you thinking that high point just keeps on rolling? No, I mean, I like Asheville. If anybody's going to put an end to a winning streak, I feel like we see this all the time with uh, these mid-major teams that are on ridiculous streaks. It's always a team with a veteran star, which you obviously have in, in Drew Pember, especially from the inside out. I think that's a great matchup for them. So uh, I do like Asheville, and I'll be on them with you. And I think you have their play on your sharp report too. Sure. Trent, As a matter Trent, of fact, I do. Trent might put it to bed tonight if he sees this. Yeah. Yeah, final, <laughs> final boss, man. <laughs> we need a trend video about high points win streak. We need one like we need air. That could be the difference. 
Okay. I'll let them know. Let them know. Have your people reach out to these people. All right, good. W's, Javon, it's time to cut the shit. Let's give the people what they want. Let's talk about some winners. All right. The people deserve them. Um, and I got plenty of them today. Yesterday did not go as well as I expected. I'm pretty blown still about St. Joe's. Absolutely folding like a Dollar Tree lawn chair. But Javon, it's a new day, new backs. All right, let's lock in for today's slate. And perfect segue here. We'll get started with UNC Asheville and Drew Pember. All right, guys, let's not be dumb here, okay? If the sports books are talking to you, you have to listen. I tell you guys that all the time. And in this spot, the sports books are screaming at you that High Point's win streak is on the fritz, okay? There's a very solid chance High Point loses this game, and I'll take my chances with who I think is the better actual team. Maybe not. they're not playing like it. They haven't shown it this entire season. But if I'm just looking at rosters, if I'm just looking at talent, okay, I take Drew Pember and Cup seven to eight times out of ten against this High Point team, all right? And they're going to win this game outright. They're going to keep it at least within a bucket, and that spread keeps on getting shorter. You might not even be able to get two and a half anymore. I go take, take a peep and see if it's still available. But either way, I think UNC Asheville wins this game outright and hands High Point their first loss since now. Oh, man. Of course. Um, give me the Auburn Tigers minus the points sure. in the jungle. Uh, kind of, I'll, I'll be doing the same thing like we did with UVA. I see you have the, uh, the ML parlay there too, and I will certainly tap into that, but I'm taking the points because I'm not very scared. Uh, so yeah, they did just beat them when they're in Tuscaloosa first game around, which uh, I really couldn't tell you how they came out to a, a really early blitz. I think after like the under 12 timeout in the first half where uh, Alabama shot really well from three Auburn was settling for a lot of terrible shots, which tends to happen when Auburn goes in the road sometimes, which is why they've struggled, you know, the last couple of years on the road in the jungle. It's a completely different story, which that's one of the best home court advantages in all of college sports. Uh, and it's not going to be any different today. There's a reason why this line's getting steamed up so high against the team who just beat them uh, in a game two. I mean, where Auburn shot five of 25 from three, which is certainly irregular for them. And some of the shots they were taking, you could tell uh, they were a little rattled and it was not the best shot selection. And again, you don't see that in the jungle where they're significantly better. Uh, so it's going to start there. Pretty crisp shot selection. Home court advantage is going to mean a lot, but they also have the massive advantage on the inside, which Alabama loves to run. But in the paint, they're barbecue chicken, which is why Johnny Broom in that game, I mean, he absolutely cooked. And I think he's going to do the same thing, which is why his prize pick square is down on there for mine. I think he's going to absolutely feast in this game and at home when uh, they're able to rely on Johnny Broom. It's not a good scene for a couple of teams. We've seen that this year. So give me Auburn to roll in this game. All right. I'm with you. I'm going to find a cheeky way to probably parlay it. I don't know if I can get behind the spread just yet, but I do like that angle 1,000%. And if that spread keeps ticking up, I might be joining you there. Okay? Yeah, don't, don't um, be scared. Look, the fact that I like about it the most is that Bama's beaten them the last three times that these teams have played, um, including earlier this season. Right, Javon? They've already beaten them once, um, but they haven't played in the jungle. And we'll see how that goes in round two. All right? Yeah. And um, I give the advantage move, to Auburn. Before we move, yeah. I was looking for Brim Fantasy score. I didn't see it up, though. So I just went with – PRA, but if you want blocks and steals involved, because I assume that's going to get put up at some point, or maybe it has in between the time that we put up the graphic and this. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Same thing. Mm. All right. Yeah, it looks like I've got Auburn already parlayed with George Mason here. All right. I'll, let me talk about George Mason, because you did a pretty good job with Auburn. Uh, George Mason is in a really weird spot today as well, Javon. And you know I got to back my guy Darius Maddox and co. in the spots. I don't have a choice. Um, and legends. they are playing Sister Jean. Right, they're playing Sister Jean here on the road. Sister Jean has played pretty well at home this season. Okay, they're coming off of two nice home wins against crummy teams St. Louis and Davidson. Let's not overreact there. Now Sister Jean has to go on the road where she has no powers. All right, they've always struggled on the road, and they struggle on the road this season. And they're playing a George Mason team coming off of back-to-back -back losses. The last one by one point in a heartbreaker. Okay, they have to win that game against UMass. They didn't get it done. I think they bounce back here at home. I think it's going to be the Darius Maddox show, and they're going to hand this Loyola Chicago team that's still overvalued, still overrated, and stinks on the roads a fat out. So I'm parlaying that with Auburn and going about my day. That is a two-piece W. I'm in for that. That might be uh, might be what I tail roll with for yeah. a, a little ML greaser there. Some with you. Sure. Um, Celtics is kind of a 
I don't know if I'm going to end up playing it now because there's some news that just dropped, which I'll tell you what my initial thoughts were on this game and why I was going to play it. It's because the Hawks are always fake sharp, and now they have Clint Capella, who you knew was out, uh, and then now DeJounte Murray might be out, and everybody's on Trey Young points today. And I thought that was a lot of respect for a Celtics team. Even coming off of like that massive Grizzlies blowout, I don't really put any stock into that, but Hawks team always gets a lot of respect, and now they're not getting it. I know that the Celtics are – best team in the Eastern Conference, best home court advantage in all the NBA right now, but I still felt like that was heavy in a lot of respect. If DeJounte Murray ends up actually being out because he just got ruled questionable, which I think the line is starting to tick up as a result of that, it's a little less weird. So I'm going to keep my eye on that. Uh, I will say the total has not moved, though. It's still sitting at 244.5, which I also think is really interesting. So uh, I'll, I'll probably keep an eye on that. I haven't played anything there yet. The news dropping kind of fucked that up, but uh, I might go with the over and pivot there instead if that total stays put. Okay. Potential changes there with some injury news chats. So stay posted on the Celtics. Hold. And Javon will let you know what he ends up taking. We got a sub bang coming in from Wade Taylor. Let's go, Wade. Five months. Mm. W's. We got BWA bets as well. Giving out a five U sub whale. Let's go, BWA bets. Sure he can. That's what I'm talking about, beast. Five piece. Hold the fry. Love to see that. BWA bets, let me know what the heck you're betting on today. All right, I want to tell if it's not square as hacking. All right. Um, Ws, we got the Celtics done, but that one is TBD. Let's see what that line does with this injury news. We got Zor Zorhoff coming in resubbing for three months. Definitely box that name. Let me know how to say it. But Ws, love the resub. Um, let's make that six months in a couple. Wisconsin ML should be free. I bet. KSAB is on a very, very, very a sharp wavelength today. And we'll talk about that game in a moment as well. A lot of really good college basketball games today. All right. But let's not get caught up and let's not forget about uh, Drake. All right. It's been a big week for Drake. A lot of people talking about Drake and we're not going to go into all that. I'm going to talk about the Drake basketball team and Tucker DeVries. Uh, this team is one of the best mid-majors in college basketball. <clears throat> they have one of the best coaches in college basketball and they're having one of the best seasons in the mid-majors this year. Okay. Do not sleep on Drake. The one thing I don't like about this spot is that they already dominated SIU this season, but I'll tell you what, it could not be a worse matchup for SIU and the Salukis in the spots, and they're probably going to get blown out again. That's why the spread is at minus 10. Drake minus 10 to meet on table play. Sure, it is, Webby. Sure it is. That spread cancels out um, the fact that Drake has already beaten the Salukis team this season because that spread is hilariously fat with both these teams having relatively similar records being two of the best teams in conference. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to fade Xavier Johnson because he has one of the weirdest prize pick squares up on earth. And you guys can see that on the bottom. We'll get to that in a moment. And look, if, if Xavier Johnson's not, you know, cashing his assists like he's been doing, I really do think this team is going to struggle because they're going to face guard the heck out of him. He's their best player. And they're not going to be able to create any sort of offense if he can't score or create any assists. So good freaking luck, Xavier Johnson. You can't do this all on your own. And it's looking like you're not going to have a great day based on where your prize pick squares are. And I'm laying it with Drake at home with a statement win by double digits to prove that they are the best team in this conference. Do not sleep on Tucker DeVries. He's a future pro. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It seems like a even with them going back home, it feels like a pretty massive adjustment. You don't really see those, even when you beat the shit out of a team when it's a pretty short spread the first time. So mm. kind of in. Kind of in. Good. I think Drake wins by 20-plus. Okay. Yeah, I'm down with that. Taking um, it to Toronto. Yeah, taking it to Toronto, who they're playing the rat or the Hornets, which weirdly, uh, I don't think you could really ever say, or at least too many times say that a line feels a little too large for playing the Hornets, but this one kind of does, especially when you think uh, the total also looks a little low in this game at 226. The Raptors, since the OG Ananobi trade, uh, I saw a tweet talking about this. They have the worst defensive rating in all of the NBA, uh, which is a little shocking. And you look at what they've been doing, and I've been fading them in a couple spots, including you know the Pelicans game. They're coming off of a really bad double OT spot, and they played a back to back and got absolutely shafted by the Pelicans and barely put up 100 points. Uh, they haven't been good. They've been getting destroyed by a lot of teams, especially when going on the road. And this Hornets team, they played twice this year. Uh, one time in Toronto, I believe they won in a lower scoring battle, but the last time they played in Charlotte, uh, the Hornets won outright, and that was pre trade. So now they're going back to. Uh, to Charlotte, where that first game was a five and a half spread, uh, and they won outright. Now you're going up to seven, seven and a half against the Raptors team that's played significantly worse over the past 
I don't know, a month or so. So I thought that was a little weird, but I also like the spot for them coming off of a uh, pretty disappointing performance where they're in a bad spot. Like I said, faded them against the Pelicans. It's not the same story now. They've had a day of rest. Uh, and when they've been able to face a team that's not good in the paint, uh, that's where they found a little bit of success. So Nick Richards, it's absolutely cookie in the paint. Uh, so Pirtle is probably going to have a pretty big day. I've seen his name on Twitter a couple of times, and I'm 100% in. Uh, but a lot of those guards are going to be able to slash manual quickly. He's going to really dice through that entire defense too. Uh, so I think it's a pretty good matchup for them on the road. Rarely you can say that about the Raptors these days, but give me them minus seven. Yeah, that spread is large and in charge, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm in. Give me Toronto. I'll tail that with you. I like that play. Let me take you back to CBD and some kids missing free throws. These kids are definitely missing free throws. Let me take you to Northern Iowa. Okay, these kids, their middle name is missing free throws. They love uh, this team is young, right? This team is a, a headache, to say the least. This team has been all over the place this season. What a great start they had to the year. They have the talents. They have the pieces. They have a solid coach. They have a great program. They've been good for a while. People forget they had A.J. Green there a few years ago, and I'm not talking about the receiver. I'm talking about one of the best major players in the country. He was almost like Tucker DeVries before Tucker DeVries. All right? Um, here's the deal. This Northern Iowa team is coming in, and they have not covered a game in a month. They're coming in, and they have not won a game since they beat Evansville back in January of uh, on the 23rd. All right, so they've lost three straight games. They haven't covered in forever, um, and they're playing a Missouri State team that is playing their best basketball of the season, and I don't think this team's very good at all. They've lost a bunch of their stars over the last couple of years. They're 14-9. and nine. They've been overperforming, in my opinion, and coming off of four straight wins and covers, man, this is a prime spot for a Northern Iowa team laying a pretty fat number, in my opinion. Now, the reason why it is is because they've already beaten this Missouri State team once this season in a very close game on the roads. I'll tell you what, if Northern Iowa, this young, you know, inconsistent team, if they could beat Missouri State on the road, I can't even imagine what they're about to do to this team at home tonight to get out of this losing streak, get out of this rut, all right? In Bowen Bourne, we trust. In Titan Anderson, we trust. These young guys, Titan's not that young, but the rest of the team is, is extremely young. These young guys... Yeah. Need this win more than they need oxygen. And what better spot to do it against a team you've already beaten at home? They're beating them again. This spread is ludicrous. It's hilarious. If it wasn't the fact that they've already beaten them once this season, this would be like a 5 u whale for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm in there. Uh, we're getting trades in the NBA. Whoa. The second I put Jordan Clarkson officially on the ban list, we're trading Fettuccini to the Pistons, opening up more of a role for Jordan Clarkson, bro. He's off the ban list now. Might have to do it again. Might wow. have to do it again. Um, That's all it's all come. Huh? Yeah, beautiful. Uh, and then uh, my last play on the books, at least, is I was really between two overs, between the Rangers lightning over and the Leaf stars over. I went with the Leaf stars over, but I think I like the other one equally as much, which we can talk about a little later. Um, you got a game under your belt, which was very important, I think, for the for both of these teams in this situation. Uh, a low-scoring game at that, which the Leafs, first time out of the break, I was the Islanders game that I took them and. Really, the defense was great. Samsonov really didn't have many high danger chances come into him in the net or come to him in the net, and he's going to be back in that today. You're going to get Wedgwood off of back to back for the Stars team. This game just screams absolute chaos for me. Uh, so I think there's going to be a lot of a lot of different things coming from the Stars team, but they've shaken up the lines a little bit post the All Star break. Uh, and they, like I said, they just went on the road to Buffalo and played a really weird game. I thought there was going to be like a a sense of the stars pulling away. I thought the Sabres were going to score early and the stars were going to pull off like three or four straights. Never really got that. The game ended 2-1 and they played a pretty tight defensive game now going up against the Leafs team who I don't know if they really want to play that style of game either and especially knowing that the stars want to put a lot of high danger chances on the net in front of Samsonov. I think they're going to be ripping puck very early in this game and when that happens for the stars, teams respond and they're not really able to stop it. So I think this is a, a pretty high scoring game really from the start. Uh, so I'm kicking that over six and a half. All right. W's crazy day of hockey yesterday. We saw that streak come to a halting end. Shout out yeah. Trent for making that video and making it happen. Can't believe I didn't have a Vegas ticket. Weak. Soft. That's actually so weak. So soft. Weak. I didn't see the video Trent made until after it was too late. And if I did, I, I definitely the, would have taken him. I thought the boost would have been enough for you, man. The boost got me right to the counter. I just never locked it in, man. 
Never locked it That's in. That's fair. That's fair. Oh, picked the wrong plays yesterday, folks. It wasn't the end of the world. Went three and four. Um, nothing terrible, but we had a lot of winners, and I picked the wrong ones. It is what it is. Yeah, that's so unlike Crabs to not fade the boost and the records. I know, Hovey, the deal is, though, man, I've really told myself not to fade these streaks anymore because I've gotten so hurt, especially in MLB. Uh, but there should have been an exception when Trent posted that video. That cancels out any sort of rules I've made with myself to do responsible gambling. To okay. be fair, I mean, not that, you, not that you necessarily had a choice, but you did have the, the flyers on your card. That was probably enough crazy hockey shit for the day for you. Yep, it was hard enough blocking that puppy in. So, you know what? We move, we groove. If you don't think I'm blocking in the squad ride every single day for at least a responsible unit chat, you don't know me because this thing is my baby, and I'm just so happy, knock on wood, that it's turned out this well. Can we get another one today? I'm trying to build a bankroll up, maybe some quality over quantity um, you know, type card today where maybe I go a couple units on the squad ride. Can we lock in? Can we lock in? Grabs is the full two inches deep in guts. Trent last night while I called you. Dude, give me a break. <laughs> I answered the phone. I did my job. I was available. We talked through it. I hyped him up. And then I hung up and went back about my day. Okay. Let's move. Let's group, Javon. We went over our straight bets for the day. All right. Why don't we talk about some of our prize pick squares? Because we swept yesterday. So, chat, listen up. I've got a square for you that my guy BWA bets, who dropped the five U whale sub bangs earlier, DM me. Late last night, this guy's been in the lab for hours, okay? He goes, hey, check this square out, buddy. Xavier Johnson, all right? Take a peep at that thing. Uh, he has not uh, gone under, or sorry, he has not gone less than in since December 2nd, not January, okay? Not Christmas, all right? December 2nd, Javon, and you're telling me they're hanging this when I already love Drake and everything about them in this spot and their defense matching up perfectly with S SIU. Oh, this is a square made in heaven. This might be my favorite square of the new year. Javon, Xavier Johnson, he might be a baller. He might be the best player on this team, but he ain't getting five assists. Yeah, I mean, the, the fact that this is even up is crazy, absolutely crazy. And it's not the first time it's been up too. So, I mean, going on the road – Oh, he picked the Chiefs. That's huge. W's. Yeah, huge. but I mean, going on the road, I think Xavier Johnson is just going to have to be a, a scorer in this game. Not that like he isn't usually and still puts up these numbers, but I think he's going to have to be selfish tonight. If they have any chance of staying in this game, and if it does get ugly and he's not in the game, that can only you know help come end of the second half too. So I'm with yeah. you. I'm with you. Give me a blowout. Drake is better win this game big. Absolutely clamp up, and Xavier Johnson is going to be – Maybe a points guy tonight, but I don't think he's going to be doing anything. I think he's about to get shut down. Maybe have his worst game of the season. We'll see. He is a bucket, but I'll tell you what, chat. I'm in love with this square. I'm telling you right now, favorite square of 2024, right here. Xavier Johnson. Lock that puppy in. All right? Javon, what can I pair this with? What's your favorite prospect square today? Yeah, I mean, it probably isn't one that you necessarily love, but it's Trinai Broom taking his pra and i mean for people in chat who are saying fantasy score i think that's a perfectly fine pivot too after what he did first game but uh coming into this game i mean you can look at what he did the last game at bama he was dominant 25 and 14 and one in that game but i guess the one's pretty irrelevant but 25 and 14 took 17 shots there's a reason for it bama's cookie in the paint i mean they're pretty much same thing that we're talking about with the hornets they're a bunch of just tall, maybe slightly athletic, you know, skinny bigs that don't really have much of a pulse on the boards. You know, they're not super aggressive defensively. Uh, so for a guy like John, John I Broom, that's food down there. And he also has talked about, he's been looking forward to this game in the jungle for a couple weeks now. He especially talked about uh, wanting to stay in this game because last year he got into foul trouble very early, which pretty much cost them the game. Uh, so it, there's a reason why that game played out like it did last year. And I can guarantee he's going to be a lot more conservative this season. But again, the matchup is there. I think he's going to absolutely grub and talking about the game, just period. They are not covering this game or dominating this game without Janai Broom being absolutely dominant in this game. Uh, so obviously I think they do. And the guard play is just not going to be enough against Alabama. If you want to go toe to toe with Alabama and with your guards, you're going to lose that battle probably seven times out of 10 because they can run in transition. They're athletic. They're going to score with you. They're going to shoot with you. This is how you dominate the game. You're physical with them on the road. 
you work from the inside out on the road and you let your best player dominate in the paints. He's going to do that tonight. I'll tell you what, you said the same exact line I was about to come in with that I thought was pretty fucking good. There is no chance that Auburn covers this game. Maybe they'll win. There's no chance they cover this game unless Janai Bruin goes more than his PRI. There's no way. Talk about a correlation. I mean, look, and Auburn's one of my favorite plays of the day. I'm with you. I love this square. I love this angle. He has been talking about this game for a year. He fucked up last year. He cost them that game. He knows that. And there's been a lot of weird talk about Janai Broom recently. I think he silences all the hate. And I think he proves that he is one of the best big men, at least offensively, in the country. All right? He's going to hold down the jungle. He's going to do his job tonight. I'm with you. What part of his game do you think he thrives in the most tonight that he typically wouldn't? Is, is it rebounds? Is he going to grub there, look like Shaq? Is it going to be points? Is he dropping a 30-berg? Are you not sure? Is that why you're going PRA? Yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not really sure, but I, I definitely think he's going to have to score and be aggressive very early in this game, especially like to, for Auburn to settle in in these massive games, you see it kind of follow the same pattern, whether it's Alabama, whether it's any massive game at home. Wizards are part of fetching trade. That'll be interesting. I need inside um, chat. I need insight. Yeah, we Let need some know. insight on that. Let me know. But yeah, I, I'd say Auburn in these big games at home, they kind of follow, especially when they have like the advantage inside, they follow the same formula. It's like they're going to feed him early, and I think he's going to be very aggressive. So if I had to pick one that's going to be more dominant over the other, I'd probably say scoring wise, he's going to be pretty dominant. But on the boards, like he's going to have to be a force. Auburn's going to have to rebound. I do think too that Auburn's defense, I mean, not a crazy take, but at home, their perimeter defense is much, much better. So I can guarantee you uh, Mark Sears is going to have a little bit of trouble shooting the three ball. Aaron Estrada, probably same deal. And that's uh, a lot of long rebounds for Janai Broom, where he kind of thrives there. So I don't think you're going to be uh, on the short end of the stick on either category, points or rebounds. All right. So am I putting $1,000 on Janai Broom more than PRA and Xavier Johnson less than four and a half assists now? Or am I waiting? What am I doing? We crabs well. We do have like, I do like a lot of squares today too. We, uh, I did cook up a secret overnight geyser with Trent, and I still like those squares. I mean, we got plenty to talk about. We can hear what, uh, what catches your eye. All right. I'll wait patiently for now, but I want to lock in a nuke, a toothpaste. Sure. All right. W's chats, take a little mental screenshot of this puppy. Boop. All right. This is the sharp report for today, and I've got a really good feeling about these plays. All right. Do not sleep on Auburn and George Mason. I saw some people in chat asking, um, what MLP means, money line parlay. All right, write that one down. Learn it, memorize it, study it. That's what it is. Via Woj. Oh, God. Kevin Knox, 2022 second-round pick via Wizards. And draft rights to Gabriel Proshita to Jazz. Don't know who the fuck that is. Don't so tell me we're getting Kevin Knox. Pick? Don't tell no, me we're going, getting Kevin Knox on the team. You're going to Jazz. Knox to the Jazz. What did the we're Wizards get pick? for the pick? Wizards aren't involved. Just oh, pick yeah. It says, it says pick via the Wizards. It's just the, the pick they already had. Sure. Yes, they're not involved. W's. Really. That sounds right. We probably lost that pick in some sort of terrible trade we got fleeced in. Sure. The map checks out there. All right. Um, man, the Wizards are a disgrace. I would love for them to be just at least a little bit competitive because going to NBA games is fun and that arena is cool. What a waste. What a waste. Um, Bradley Beal ruined everything. All right. Let's move. Let's groove, Javon. What do we want to talk about? You want to go through this CBB slate? It's pretty loaded. We can. Also, I was just yeah. I was just uh, thinking about it. The fact that Kevin Knox getting traded, that might be a sign, bro. Because you know where uh, Kevin Knox went to high school? Mm. Tampa. He was my uh, my school's rival. And you know who else went there? Who? Oh. Jani Broom. Wow. So that could random. be a sign. Random Kevin Knox appearance, just as we're talking about his uh, successor as a star there. It's weird. Tampa Catholic? Yeah, Tampa sure. Catholic. Bro, look, right. at this, look at this comment under this tweet. <laughs> Imagine if Woj did cameos where like he could tweet. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Announce my divorce. Announce my divorce. Unbelievable. That's crazy. It's like the Bruce Buffer guy who does the freaking yeah. UFC stuff. He does cameos Literally. for like a million dollars. I mean, mm-hmm. Woj could do that. Like Good. literally overlay on fucking TikTok, a uh, mm-hmm. uh, fake Woj tweet, and then just him talking about it. Yeah, yeah. people would pay good money for that. Yeah, sure. 
any way that my man's uh, taco can find joy in his life now. <laughs> if it's a Woj, you know, video, if that's how he's got to cope, so be it. Okay. Everyone copes in different ways. Somebody might want to Woj tweet. Somebody else might want to just be left alone. I don't know. <laughs> that's up to Taco. All right. That's Taco's life. W Goods. Um, all right. Let's talk about some CBBs. All right. Um, a lot of great games today. I, I swear sometimes these Wednesday slates are better than the Super Tuesdays. Um, and today I'd even put in that boats. I like the slate. I like the card. I like the games better today than I did yesterday. Straight up. Um, we get started out with Stetson and Bellerman probably. That game stinks. Look, Bellerman is in that pool of teams that you just don't bet on because they're sharp every game and they never come through. If anything, you fade them. They are in that pool of about five or ten teams. Do not bet Bellerman. They are fake sharp every game. They stink. I don't know why they get respect. It makes negative sense to me. Zero. What did they know? Because they keep fucking losing, and it's not really close. If anything, I bet Stetson. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of want to get involved with Stetson just for, like, shits and giggles in this game. Yeah, just to fade, just to fade Bellerman. Hard to sit back and, and watching Bellerman just lose and not cover every single game. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it's, they're just – Why they're are we not profiting off of this? That is a horrendous organization over there. Yeah, what a joke. What a joke. Mike Vrabel to be around Wisconsin football this year? Dude, I just, I just don't get that. Good Is that what he's doing? He's probably waiting it out, waiting for another job. He's not rushing it, which I have no problems with. Yeah. Right? He mean, didn't make the first wave. I have no problem with, with him doing that. I mean, good for him, good for Wisconsin. I just I just don't know how the guy doesn't have a job. Like I don't either. That I don't get. Did you just, hear that crazy report the other day that somebody said they were scared? One of the GMs at the Senior Bowl came out and said that teams are hesitant to bring in Vrabel because of his physical size yeah, and appearance. Yeah. That, that large, can't be true. Large person. That can't be true, right? No. Apparently, he was roommates with Luke Fickle. Hmm. College teammates okay. and roommates. Makes sense. Interesting. So that select. math checks out. All right. He's too intimidating. Bro, he's the coach. Yeah. He's not like, supposed to be your doing? friend. Oh, doing? man, these kids are so soft these days. They can't take any sort of difficult coach. God, if some of these kids had to deal with the coaches I had growing up, they'd probably call the police. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not even like That's how you coach. It's not even like he's like a dick. Like all the play, he's a player's coach. Players love him. Yeah. He's a hard ass a little bit, but he's he a is, player's but coach. I mean, it's like you don't get many hard asses that like players love to play for, and he is. Oh, great. One That's of them. how you know he's a good fucking coach. I'm with yeah. you. Yeah. pay. Yeah, it, this could not be true. There's no way that these words actually came out of a GM's mouth. Mike Vrabel being a large person, scared away some certain teams. Yeah, that makes sense, Diana Rossini. Sure. He's a very large human being, and he can be very intimidating to people in an organization that are going to be a part of these decisions. That's a factor. You're telling me there was a group of smart, rich executives who are wise, and their job is to make the correct choices about the team, sitting around a round table in the office saying, we don't want Mike Vrabel because he's too big. There's no fucking way that happened. There's no way. Yeah, my bad. I'm calling Cap. I'm calling Cap. We move off of that. There's no way that happened. Okay, give me a break. Um, all right, let's hop in to the Georgetown game. I know everyone's waiting for us to talk about that one, Javon. Everyone wants the Georgetown play. Um, I actually like Georgetown in this spot. Um, look, I know Ed Cooley has had one heck of a tough time this season, not only for their play. Uh, but also, you know, for that documentary that came out, kind of calling him a piece of shit, which I'm not going to spoil it, but you guys should watch it. It pretty much talks about him being a piece of shit. All right. Um, been a tough year for Ed Cooley. Been a tough year for Georgetown. So I don't know why he's there, but he is there and he is a good coach. Those are two things I know. Um, he might be not a great guy, but he's a great coach. And he's going to turn this Georgetown program around. I would not be surprised to see them play better down the stretch. He's a great motivator and getting his Georgetown guys, you know, locked in to at least keep this game within 10 points. We're not asking for the world. We're not asking for a win. We're asking for Georgetown to keep this game within, like I said, single digits. If they do that, they cover with ease. And I love that Seton Hall, after playing like shit and coming back down to earth, like the Seton Hall team that they are, are coming off a dominant 72 to 39 win against DePaul. They probably think they're the 2015 Warriors right now. And they might lose outright to a Georgetown team that is just literally foaming at the mouth, just waiting for a big time win for a confidence booster. These kids are starving. They probably haven't slept in a month. They haven't gotten a win in a month. This could be the one, maybe even a half few ML sprinkle instead of a spread that because they probably either win this game outright or they lose by 40. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. This, uh, this is giving me Creighton Butler vibes a little bit of this game. I don't know if I'm going to get there with it, but 
just seems like such the obvious, I don't know, that you can't even call it sharp, but obvious blowout spots. I mean, Seton Hall just dominated DePaul, which not as, isn't really worth anything because DePaul is awful, but they look good last game. Georgetown, three of the last four games, has gotten absolutely shit-pumped, and the other one, I mean, they yep. lost to Providence in a game that realistically they probably should have had because that was disgustingly ugly how they closed that game out. So, yeah, it just seems like the one they come back and, and they get their lick back, and it's just somehow you – Snap your fingers and it's a last possession game. Yeah, I'm in. Add George Towns to my cart. We're rolling with the Hoyas today. Hate to do it. All right, not a big Eddie Cooley guy. All right, I, that that documentary man. I'm telling you, I think I got taken down because of uh, some copyright stuff. Whatever. Yeah, I've been trying to been trying to find it and tap in. I tried to find it for my roommates because I was like, you guys gotta watch this fucking thing. And they're like, what are you talking about? The link is blank. And I'm like, oh, they must have taken it off, and I haven't seen it go back up. But if yeah, I do, Jeff Goodman, man. Yeah, hey, just fucking everything up, man. Fucking everything up. All right. Georgetown, potentially an ML Sprink. At least a little small wager on the plus 13 there. Love seeing them at minus 108 on the green book. That is a W. Let's move. Let's group. LaSalle, St. Louis. Any plays there? Both these teams stink. Yeah, they're kind of ass. I want no part. Local resident Sharp, Dead Larry Birds. He likes LaSalle. Can't talk I don't know if I need to counter with LaSalle. Makes too much sense. Right? Sure. St. Louis does give me Bellarmine vibes, 100%. Yeah. Um, but I'm not going to take them because they are that bad. And I don't really feel like betting on the Billkins or watching them play today. Straight. Yeah. Fair enough. I mean, they might be playing some of the worst basketball of the season out of anybody. They are bad. It's like Detroit Mercy. What is it? Uh, Mississippi Valley State. And then uh, St. Louis. Bottom three teams that I've ever seen much. Uh, that I've ever seen play. Terrible. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Charleston Southern and Winthrop. I don't have anything there. Do you? I don't. Dude, I'm also calling cap on that footage. I'm just gonna Dude. say you're telling me that now it comes out. I know. The second we all start like bitching about it, they just have clips, which some of them are very clearly like the same clip. Like they have free throws in there that are all the exact same clip, and like so. Stuff like this has come out before. I'm actually surprisingly tapped into this because I will stand on it with Mikey. There's no fucking way Will Chamberlain had 100 points in a game. Um, I saw a bunch of people in the comments saying, oh, this video is edited. You can tell the last like third of it is just a loop of the you know beginning. Um, so there's definitely some sketchy stuff there. It definitely could be cropped and edited. Uh, I mean, it looks like it was filmed on a literal potato. So I don't know what's good with that. Uh, I'm assuming that's just what the cameras look like back then. But um I don't know, man. I don't think this is the I don't think this is the hundred point footage. I think somebody sat down, grabbed whatever they could to make it look as realistic as possible, um, and then they put it out for clicks, is my guess. Guys, yeah. if we had the footage, the NBA wouldn't tweet out a picture of him holding up a fucking white piece of paper saying a hundred on it. They'd be showing the man's highlights in vintage, uh, because then it would have happened, but it didn't. They don't have footage of it. All they have is a picture of him written with a hundred out or a hundred in crack. That's all they have. Also, like, why now? Like, like, why is so, why take it so long for this to come out? Like, yeah, I mean, it just just surfaces when know. it's when it's hot on the social media. Yeah, man, I bet. I bet. Yes, yeah, so I understand he was playing against six foot two milkman. Okay, I understand yeah. he was he was playing against. It was like Babe Ruth type, right? He's playing against people not in his own league. I get it. Okay. Yeah, they've also but, like said multiple times that. It was like this weird standoff game, like a different venue where there was, you know, no cameras or no like live footage of the game allowed. It's all been like a bunch of bullshit stories that are just don't piece together at all. So it's just like, of course, you know, the the hundred point game that is this this big narrative for a scoring record is magically this one game that was somewhere else where nobody could see it happen or nobody has any any records of it happening. I mean, I'll tell you what, right now. There's no way my man shoots free throws underhand and he scored 100 points in a game. I don't care who he's playing against. I don't care if he's playing against five toddlers. You ain't scoring 100 points if you shoot your free throws like that. Respectful. I'm sorry. Yeah. This is you know? like, this is exactly it. It's just like all the VIP cappers that say they're up, you know, plus 150 units, check marks with absolutely nothing else to show for. It. That's just 100, 100 point paper. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Crabs ain't scoring any points during halftime. Well, yeah, I'm not Will Chamberlain, brother. Okay. <laughs> Crabs, Crabs actually airballed the three at halftime of the 100-point game. That is that is actually on record. 
Dude, I still cannot sleep at night thinking about that atrocious shooting performance at VCU. I still lose sleep over it. I do. It's great. And Goots had to watch that with his own eyeballs. I'm surprised he's even had he has vision right now. Oh, dude, I've had to wash him out a couple times since it's happened. Yeah, I, mean, it's... I don't blame you. You probably had to go talk to someone about it, right? Yeah, I don't blame I did, you. Let me I know how much therapy. that cost it. I owe you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, you know. Probably had to talk through some of that. It's like watching a fucking nightmare live. <laughs> All right. We got Chase Breedlove coming in hot, giving out a five U whale five minutes ago. Probably thought I missed it. No fucking chance. W Chase. Um, saw Chase getting a picture with his favorite tennis player the other day, Ben um Ben Shelton, ben Shelton I believe. Yeah, that was such a fucking W and made my day. Such a dumb. Um, it's like love seeing the boys grow up. Flick with Sam Laporta, man. Yeah. It's, just, dude, it's all time. Uh, has to happen. Has, has to happen. To. I wonder if he's gonna be we in Vegas. To, Might have to glaze. Maybe. A lot of players are out there right now. Maybe. Who knows? Um, I know one of the players in the Raiders got a DUI on the strip last night. Yep. Yeah, the players are out and about. Yeah. Stay safe out there, folks. Uh, Trent and Shelly are heading out there early tomorrow, I believe, a little early with Josh for this little poker tournament. All right. Or like Crabs taking a pick with Josh. I would never accept a picture with Josh. <laughs> I would never accept. I would never scoop that low. You think I want a picture with, with that guy? Crazy. That loser? Crazy. I don't want a picture with him. Oh. All right, looks like Shelly is posted up next to MJ Melendez. Can't make it up. That's actually unbelievable. That's hysterical. Shelly did say they had a uh, in this. Shelly said they had a late add to the tournament, and it was Dalton Kincaid too. No way. Wow. Yeah. Hilarious. Dalton Kincaid's playing in this. According to Shelly, yeah. At his table or just in the tournament? They don't know. I, I don't know. He just said in the tournament. Okay. I don't know if they're at his it's table or not. But Definitely not at his table if this table's already set. But do you know who Rampage and Brad Owen are? I know who Brad Owen is because I see him holding up a bazillion dollars of cash every single day in a video, and I know he's a scammer somehow. No, he's just a poker YouTuber. So is Rampage. Oh, he's rich, rich. We got like he's, like, he's, like, he's like the top poker, poker YouTuber. Oh, and then man. Rampage, oh, the YouTube poker goats. Yeah, and then, <laughs> Rampage. and then Rampage started on YouTube, but he's trying his hand in pro events now, and he's been doing great. Oh, geez. is he a YouTube poker player as well? Yeah, he he started that. He started doing YouTube, and that's how Ooh. he got big. And now he's a pro. Okay. Yeah, this I don't think you're Brad, me, dude. We're gonna have to take like Trent under time at table. Yeah, sitting you're right telling next to me. You guys. But I will say, I will say, I. These guys are used to playing pros. They're not used to playing amateurs. So sometimes you Anything can use that happen. to your advantage. So, you know, we'll see. It's all chance. Who knows? People forget, hmm. Goots, big time poker player. We still need to go to MGM Grants. I promised mm -hmm. you we're going there this year. Remember? Okay. Yes. We got to hit it. We got to hit it. Um, wow, Goots, that's W advice. Mm -hmm. You might have to let the boys know. I, Say, I hey, told Shelly yesterday. That's what I told him. These poker players, right? They're typically going against pros who go by the books. You guys might have an edge here because you're wild cards, and we know yeah. that they're not going to be playing by the books. This, this is a great okay. comment. Play wrong, and there's a chance. If it's you the don't, only chance. If you don't yeah. play how they – they're going to try and read you, and if you're just playing like an idiot, they're not going to know how to read you. Well, yeah, I'll be honest like, with you. I feel like Trent is the easily – the most easily readable oh, person. Trent, Trent might be on cooking. Face or Shelly might not take. be cooking. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be betting on Shelly. As well, <laughs> and maybe a little sprinkle on Trent for the vibes because I know yeah. that if I don't, I'll regret it. But uh, either way, rooting for the boys. Looks like Jack Settlement as well out there at the table. Can we scroll down a little bit? Who are the two goats on the bottom? This is a chess player, I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure okay. who Austin Mills is, but Dude, the, probably the a genius. Profile right. picture with a chessboard in it. It's crazy. Yeah, yep. that's a flex. That's how you know. That's how you know you're about your business. That is a flex, folks. I think that's something that people probably don't appreciate till you're about thirty, maybe. Um, and you probably make fun of the guys like that, but once you hit 30, probably I'd imagine chess probably becomes a respectable trait to have. Maybe I'll add it to my PFP, you know, add it to the card, add it to the card. Austin Mills, a YouTube hooper, sure, cool. Brad Owen's gonna clean up, yeah, okay. I had him confused with somebody else, but if he's the YouTube uh poker goats, one of the most popular guys out there, that's very cool mm -hmm. that he's sitting out there with the boys. And yep. our guys, Trent and Shelly, are gonna have their hands full playing against some pros. That's gonna be me, tough. Me and Grins right. might, might need to teach him something. I know Grins plays as well. So sure. Yeah. Chelly Chelly played the last year. So I mean he's got enough. Yeah, Chelly's a vet now. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Chelly does have one under his belt. Let's see how the boys do, guys. Uh, this is happening tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, like you're saying, and you can watch it live. You can watch it live on Poker Graham. I'm gonna have to download yeah. that shit too. 
All right. Um, do not forget about this. This is kind of electric. This is going to be pretty cool. All right, chat. Let's root on our boys. Let's see how Chelly and Trek can do. And let's bounce back to CBBs. All right. Um, High Point and, and UNC Asheville. Wow. Ooh. Would you look at that? Yeah. Sure. Looks like we're at plus one and a half. Yes. What about that? Yes. Yes. They are winning this game. You cannot tell me that that line is moving this way when it was already short against a team who's getting tons of bets, tons of action, and has the longest win streak in college basketball active right this second. Are you kidding me? When the yeah. sports books are talking, chats, what do you do? You fucking sit there and you listen. That's all you got to do. And they're screaming at us. UNC Asheville is a winner. Who's telling speaking me on the shit? Of, speaking of moving. Who's telling me on Drew Pember? You see the one on the bottom of the screen there, too, Grabs. Six. Six pace. Six is crazy. This six is six piece hold the fry. It's giving me Virginia vibes. Obviously, very different game. A lot more offense, but six is wild. Okay. Grabs, check out Lazar, Stefanovic, square on prize picks. Uh, don't mind if I do. The UCLA guy, we'll check that out later. Okay. Um, let's keep powering through here. I want to talk about Wisconsin and Michigan. Look. If Wisconsin wasn't coming off of two straight bad L's, you know, maybe I'd be intrigued um, to take a stab here at Michigan. And I have been very, very limited with my Wolverines bets this season and found success. Here's the deal, though. They should not be bet on, and they are going to be fake sharp, and they are going to be overvalued and overrated because their team and because of Ken Palm and because of all these systems, Bartovic, uh, they all think that, you know, Michigan should be better than they actually are in their record. But, guys, at this point, you got to start capping some of the human aspect here. And that's kind of the favorite part that I like doing about the whole thing is really incorporating what people forget about. And it's that these guys are people too. look at what's going on in Michigan right now. I can't believe Jawan Howard hasn't been fired yet. The only reason he hasn't is because he's a member of the fab five. He's in a similar spot to Wes Unsell Jr. The Wizards coach when they kept him around for a year too long. Okay. Their players are the most toxic group of people I've ever witnessed in my life. Even without Hunter Dickinson, they've got a kid suspended who can only play in home games. It's got to be even worse in that clubhouse. That's all the stuff that we know. Imagine what's going on, you know, behind the scenes, what's going on with that team. They're a joke. If I was a Michigan alum, if I was a booster of that team, I would be livid because this is a joke that's been going on now for three years in a row. You know, Jawan Howard's gotten away with it by, you know, some solid postseason success uh, in the times he's snuck in there when nobody expected it. So maybe that's what's keeping him around. But my goodness, something's got to change. Michigan stinks. Wisconsin's coming off of two terrible losses. They might take care of business here. I'm certainly not that Michigan. I won't be on Wisconsin. Javon, I want your thoughts. I think this, I think Michigan's fake sharp though. I do too. I, I don't sharp. even like I don't even think it's that sharp because like this I remember because I bet against Wisconsin in this same exact scenario when they're on the road against Penn State and the line was the exact same. So like a team that usually gets a lot of line respect and they don't deserve it is Michigan. I guess you can say since that game, it's gotten worse and worse. But, I mean, you're getting the same line. It's like I, I would argue it's even a little shorter than I would expect or longer mm -hmm. than I would expect. I guess you could say yeah, longer. I, I wouldn't have been shocked to see like a four. That's just mm -hmm. the shit that Michigan gets. It's like I'm, I am i don't want to fade Wisconsin. I'll tell you that. I think it's a pretty solid bounce back opportunity. That's what I was telling Mikey on the morning after. And if you guys didn't check that out, I'm sure he already tweeted it out. You can rewatch um, in the morning. I was on there for about 20 minutes. So um, we were talking a little bit about this game and he's landing with Wisconsin. He actually had some pretty good reads today. And I said, you know what? I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I will not be partaking. I'll be rooting for you. But gun to my head, that's, that's probably the right side here. And now that you're talking about it, that spreads with how Michigan's been valued all season. It's not short. If anything, it might be a little bit fat, right? I mean, it's up to what? Five and a half on the road coming off of two losses. I'm with you. I think Wisconsin takes care of business. I wouldn't be surprised if that's a pretty solid ML parlay piece as well. I'd feel comfortable recommending that to Trent. Yeah, I think it's a solid ML piece. And uh, to answer our question uh, in chat here, they are the exact opposite to Minnesota. Minnesota gets no line respect, and they cover pretty much every single game. Michigan gets a lot of it, and they don't cover for shit. So – Kind of pretty much polar opposites, which is uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see Michigan do what they do best tonight and not stand a chance. Really good point, too. 
that team definitely deserves a little bit of respect as well. I don't think they're very good. So I think they're fraudulent, but they keep winning, and that's all that matters. Mm-hmm. And if I was a Michigan team, right, Michigan fan right now, I would be ecstatic. Guys, they're like 18 and three ATS this season. I saw people tweet about it last night. It might be a number uh, or two off there, but they are unbelievable ATS this season. Playing out of their minds, overperforming out the wazoo. Honorable mention for Wagon Wednesday, Minnesota. Yeah. Holy smokes. Nobody talks about them. They're not flashy, right? They don't have, you know, a ton of big name guys. They've got some solid guys, right? Uh, Nothing crazy, but the Gophers, cash cows, the best team ATS this season. If you would have told me that before the year, I'd be shocked. Straight up. Yeah. Honestly. Um, I'd be shocked. Let's move. All right. We've already talked a lot about Auburn. If people join late, though, Javon. Give them a quick 10-second sell job. Why do we love Auburn in this spot, laying six against a team that's already beaten them this season? Uh, because what you just said seems awfully easy. I'll tell you that much. I mean, the Alabama mm-hmm. plus six is, is crazy that it's even up that high, not just after what they did uh, in that first game, beating them and honestly holding them to a, a little bit lower scoring of a game than I would have expected too. I know you, there was a weird situation with like the lights early in the game may have thrown a little bit of stuff off, but whatever it was. Blazing shooting performance in that game. Auburn shot horrendously. Janai Broom is going to make all that not matter because they're going to dominate in the paints where Alabama is pretty vulnerable. And Auburn's going to win this game by, I mean, more than six now we need. I think it's going to be a double digit game. The jungle is going to be the jungle. Okay. I am stoked to watch this game tonight. It is going to be madness at the jungle. They're going to get some revenge. Alabama's beaten them the last three times they've played, two at Bama uh, and one at Auburn, which is the game you remember where Janai Graham got in foul trouble. That motherfucker probably hasn't slept peacefully since that game. Like he talked about, right? He's been he's been hinting at it all season. He is ready for this game. He's got it circled on his calendar. This is the perfect spot. The spread is fat. It keeps on moving. The splits are sharp. There's big old bets being dropped on Auburn, and mine's going to be one of them. Yep. I'm in. LSU, Tennessee. Any thoughts here, Javon? Not really. It's okay. It screams that this is a weird spot for Tennessee because they are uh, coming off of that massive win over the weekend, and then they go to College Station on Saturday. So, like, this is a a really weird sandwich game, but my gut is telling me that I really don't want to fade them in the spot, partially just because LSU, I think, matches up pretty horrendously, but – I don't know. Whenever they get faced with like any sort of team that gives you any type of ball pressure on defense, where you know Tennessee's playing at home, where their defense is significantly better, they fold and they turn the ball over a lot. So, uh, spot wise, definitely tells you LSU the play is the play here, but I don't want to do it. Yep, I'm with you. I'm good on that game. I'm still trying to figure out Tennessee, right? A little bit. A little they bit. have so much potential, man. They got so much potential. If Ziegler and Vescovy can get their heads out of their asses, this team could be special. They really could. But they haven't done it. They haven't done it. They're missing something. They really are. And Don Connect can't do it all himself. All right? Yeah. yeah. They're missing that Bozo who's throwing bows in the paint, hurting people last year. They're missing <laughs> that physicality. Right? Josiah James, I don't know if he's cutting it for them down there. They need yeah. a bruiser. Right? Villanova Xavier, I wanted to pick your brain about this game as well. We have about 20 more minutes on here, and we'll leave some time. I'm assuming you have some NHL and NBA plays you want to touch on? A little bit, yeah. Dubs. Um, You like Xavier in the spots, fading Villanova when people are hopping back on the bandwagon after one good game? Yeah, I definitely lean Xavier. Probably one that I'm not going to get with because, I mean, Xavier's still a team that I, I like that team. I just have trouble figuring out exactly what they are right now, and Villanova, I feel like we pretty much know at this point, they're, just, they're not a good team. Good performance last time out, but uh, not a team that I think long-term is going to really amount to anything. So in this spot, I, I would maybe square up, I guess, if that's what it's considered with Xavier, but I don't love it. Mm. Let's talk a little bit about Syracuse and Louisville. I have no comments about Indiana State besides them having a really cool fat kid with glasses who's the ultimate meme. <laughs> And he's going to be, if they make it into March Madness, everyone's going to know about him and talk about him. Let's talk about Louisville and Syracuse, okay? Some weird drama going on in Syracuse right now, Javon. One of their best players is kicked off the team, you yeah. were saying. Um, but look, they've got some good news here, I guess, at least minimally. J.J. Starling, the guy who came over from Notre Dame, he's starting to play well. Last five games, he's averaging over 18 points per game, Javon. Um, and, you know, without another score tonight, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes off for another 20 piece. 
thoughts on that angle today with JJ? Yeah, I mean, I would certainly be down with that. Um, I think this game, not that it's really a hot take because it involves Louisville, but I think they're going to have to face a pretty tough test from Syracuse guards today. So, like, uh, they really can't guard a park car anyway, but I think they're going to have trouble getting any stops on defense against Syracuse, especially on the road. Um, so, I mean, I wouldn't mind an over, which I, I – this is the one, like, I don't know why the splits look like they do on this game. It's not even sharp. There's just, like, zero bets on the over pretty much. Uh, so whether that's actually true or not, definitely caught my eye. But total sticking up, as it should, in a Louisville game. And Syracuse wins this game by a lot. It's going to be because they put up 100. I agree. Give me J.J. Starling more than 15.5 points. Like the over in that game as well. All right? Yeah. If you guys don't know who that is, he came over from Notre Dame. All right, Cormac Ryan wasn't the only Irishman to leave. Okay, J.J. Starling broke my heart and left as well, and he really struggled in the beginning of the season. I mean, look, they have a terrible coach. Um, this guy who's filling in for Beheim is not the answer. They need to figure that out. Um, it really took them a while to find any sort of consistency this season, uh, but J.J. Starling stepping up the last five games has been pivotal for this Orange team, um, and he's going to shine again tonight. 15 and a half. I think he gets 20. I'm in. All right. W's, JJ's a beast, fellow Bebo alum. Sure, W's. Red will be a good coach. I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah. Furman, Mercer. Uh, how about Furman? Let's fade them out of spike because they stink, and I, I'm tired of this team. Preseason number one in this conference. They are every year. They're good every year. And then when it matters, they fold. And they've been folding a little more than usual this season. I mean, they haven't come through once. They're coming off an atrocious loss in a sharp-ass spot where they needed a win to prove that they were one of the better teams, you know, in this conference and they lost and they blew it. They were missing multiple layups at the end of that game. Javon, I'm not saying we don't take Furman or, or take a look at that, you know, spread or them being a favorite on the road here, but they do not have the clutch gene. They simply are not that good. Yeah. I mean, they're really not, but you know, when it's a, a spite fade spot after, you know, betting on them, you know, they're going to come out and look like the Warriors. I know I've been here before, bro. Yeah. So, you know, for that reason, right, go ahead and lock in your firm and bets now, boys. All right. Yeah. Um, let's keep scrolling. I've already talked about George Mason. Love that spot. Thought that spread was fat with them coming off some losses and Loyola Chicago playing really well. Any NC State pit takes? Kind of like pit. Dude. NC State is one of like sneakily the most overvalued teams in the betting market. And like they were, I think minus four, like against Miami. I'm just like off the cuff thinking of the games at home they've had. Like they were plus three ish against UNC. They just played a game against Georgia Tech where they're minus eight and a half. Uh, and for uh, a pit team who, I mean, they get a little respect sometimes, but to see them plus three on the road looks really odd to me. And I do think it's a, a pretty solid matchup too, because they're one of the few teams I think in the ACC that can successfully make life really tough on DJ Burns and bring him out on the perimeter. And it's going to work because that's exactly what they want to do on offense. So, you know, uh, what I was talking about with uh, Carlton Carrington and Wake, how they play yep. the little drop coverage and then play the pick and roll. What do you think they're going to do with DJ Burns the entire game? They're just going to bring him out every single time. Yeah. It's going to work. And Get him out they're the going, it's going to be baby food, whether he wants to use the mid range, if they're going to play super drop, soft drop coverage, which they're probably going to have to because DJ Burns can't get out there like that. It's going to be Carlton Carrington mid range baby food. If he wants to play up close and put pressure on the ball, he's going to drive past. Him. So, like, I, I think this is one of the worst matchups out of all the ACC schedule for DJ Burns. So, I think it makes sense a little bit basketball wise. Sheesh. Well, let's cut the shit and get to business here. Is Carrington up on prize picks? He is, but he's coming off of two really good games. So, like, I I like the basketball matchup, but I don't love the spot necessarily. Mm. That line well, is – Well, the total's moving up. Yeah. From 141 to 142 and a half. It's going to be points. It's going to be points. Hmm. I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't mind it. Yeah. Let's pivot back. Pitt's probably the right side there. I just don't believe in that team. I'm with yeah, you on NC State. Yeah, 100%. Good matchup there for Pitts, probably why they're a short dog, and that's definitely the sharp side in that game. All right. Keep scrolling, goods. We got to power through these puppies. Um, Duquesne and Davidson. Oh, man, my two arch nemesis. I guess it's the plural version there. Um, 
man, Davidson stinks. Uh, man, Duquesne is back right now. They're on fire, right? A um, little bit of a weird short spread, or what are you thinking about the spreads? I feel like Davidson is all over the place. I feel like one day they get respect on the line, the next day they get none. Um, what's good with this with this line? Yeah, I'm not really sure, to be honest. I mean, the last thing I want to do in this game is is take the cane when they finally start to look like they're putting it together against the big right. team. Who, I mean, they haven't been all that good, but still a, a team and a program that's been there, done that in big games against bigger programs like this. So yep. I don't know. I'm definitely not going to get to counter with anything in this game, but I would be a little concerned about Duquesne. Yeah. Um, Davidson owns Duquesne. They always beat them every year. And as an A-10 guy, I've noticed that. Um, I would lean that way, but I'm not going to get there. I hate that team. hate their guts. Yeah. They're the woat. Um, let's keep moving and grooving here. we got some late-night geysers. We can power through some of these mid-mid-majors. And Javon, let us know if you want to stop for any of these puppies. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that I really have much else to talk on except for a and Mizzou, maybe Nebraska. i got something Western, right there. And, and Cal. How about Louisiana Tech? You think that spread's pretty fat? That team is hot. That is a pretty fat spread. Isn't that a fat spread? Hmm. Kind of. Huh? A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. I agree. Um, definitely lean Louisiana Tech. I don't know if I'm going to get to the counter with them, but, um, you know, they're one of the hottest teams in basketball, I will say, and they're taking care of business. So probably not a crab's play, but definitely worth noting. I still think that line is pretty fat. They probably roll. Yeah. Um, Keep scrolling, Gates. Power through, my man. Thoughts on JMU today? That's a toughie. I don't think we've gotten to that yet on the board yet, though, have we? Probably yeah, not. I mean, that, that spread looks like a classic JMU is. spot. Looks like a spot where I take Arkansas <laughs> State, and I'm in piss because JMU wins by 30, and they're really good. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. It. Um, if you think I'm fading JMU anymore, you are smoking crack. No thank you in GTA. Um, definitely not take it Arkansas State, although that's the sharp side. Doesn't matter. Again, remember I talked about those teams you put over here who don't respect coins and don't cover. There's actually a very, very select few over here in this other bin, Javon. Um, and these are teams that win and cover every single fucking game. They're them. Um, they are that guy, pal, and they don't care what the spreads are. They fucking win and cover. And somebody in some sort of sports book office is sitting there laughing, watching everyone lose money in these sharp spots. Guarantee. Yep. Fair. Guarantee. It's JMU. Talk about a parlay piece. Trent, JMU today. There's one for you. All right. Keep on scrolling, goats. Let's see what we got for some late-night geysermans. Um, Drake, I already talked about. Sure, they're getting juicy on the spread. I hope that keeps on moving and grooving. Um, UNI. Guys, I want to emphasize this real quick. UNI is probably my favorite play of the day. Um, Northern Iowa is an absolute at least 3U whale. At Ooh. least a 3U whale from me. We'll see where it goes from there. I am obsessed with Northern Iowa in this spot against Missouri State. Absolutely obsessed. I'm hoping that line keeps on moving and grooming. Sure. Um, ODU, Southern Miss, weird game. I actually want to square up and lean Southern Miss here. ODU owns Southern Miss. They always beat them, always upset them. Um, and I think they're coming off a pretty impressive win recently. Southern Miss, not so much. Um, I think Southern Miss changes that narrative and gets a win. I thought that spread with some respect when ODU's been getting mad line respect recently. They're not getting much in this spot, if you say so. If I could say so myself, considering you know ODU's history against Southern Miss, so I'm um, actually lean the favorite there in a little bit of a square spot. Sure, I'm in. Sure, Dubs. Uh, keep on moving and grooving. Go, 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 go. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Um, Creighton Providence. Not going to bet it, but Providence is a crazy short spread. Give me a break. Um, yeah, and they probably do find a way to win that game against Creighton. Probably do, but I'm good. Team same seven. with Missouri. Same exact team, same exact thing, right? Do you have to say, though, Wade Taylor, three squares calling my name. Dude. So to say that. that. Yeah. Wade Taylor, three square does not exist, brother. No way they took it down. There it goes. See ya. I bet, man. I bet. Well. Points is all just the same because whenever they play a team that's super small, not that he like doesn't do this anyway, just chuck up a bunch of shots against guards that can't defend, but they do that especially like a lot with teams that can't rebound, which Missouri can't rebound. So he just feels free to take up whatever garbage shots he wants. So volume's always there, but it's especially going to be there today. And 
Tyrese Radford had the game of his life against Florida, partially because he had to because Wade was in foul trouble and hurt for a little bit. But now we get a, a Wade Taylor game against Mizzou. I'm in. I like that angle. Okay. Sure. It was minus 150, people were saying on the books. Okay. 50. Wow, that stinks. That's All right. I like Northwestern tonight. I'm thinking about playing them myself. I think that's a pretty large spread and maybe a potential ML parlay piece here because yeah. Nebraska, look, if Nebraska had a chance at this game, they wouldn't be like they wouldn't be getting six points. Plain and simple. Northwest are coming off a bad loss. Nebraska starting to wake up again, right? And play some good basketball. No chance. Give me Northwestern. I think I'm just gonna lay with them. Yeah, I'm in. I'm down with that. Stanford, you like against UCLA? Like, don't love. Don't think I'm going to get to Same. the counter there. But, yeah, UCLA Same. looks like they're back. I don't believe it. But they did lose to them earlier. So, weird spot. Bingo, bro. Look, you're a beast. Uh, I love when you come on stream and give out winners, right? You do that a lot. Here's the deal, though, man. There's no way you can look at that high point game and that spread and see that they're barely a favorite against a new shit squad and put your actual hard-earned coins on the team with the longest win streak in college basketball. I don't get it. No, Bamuel. No high point. Please do not take them to that. All right? Goods, any later games in these? Or are we moving a groove? And I'm pretty sure this is it. Okay. <clears throat> Minus two and a half or ML? I don't even have an ML up. I mean, I don't even have the ML up on the book right now, but yeah, I'll be I'll be taking the ML. But right. you know who's probably gonna have a pretty solid game today, unfortunately. Who? Brawny. I'm actually considering taking a square. Why? You know, Cal, how terrible they are defending the perimeter. How terrible they are defending cutters. How terrible their transition defense is. This is like a, a role player's guard's dream. It's like he is he is starting to play a little better. I'm not I'm buying into that a little bit, but this is just this just screams perfect in the little matchup for Brownie. Okay. Look, he's starting to get going. He is almost hit. Um, you know, his more than points. Price pick square almost three times in the last five. It was only two, but almost. He hooked under that one time, so he's really starting to get going here and heat up. Um, all right, you will be solo on that journey, but I'll be rooting for you. Oh, I know. I, will not be I, I didn't. I didn't say that uh, to to get you to take it with me because I, I know. knew you wouldn't. But I'll definitely stay off Baden though, for yeah, sure. Fair enough. All right. Fair enough. Sure. W's goots. Um, Javon, you want to go through NBA, NHL? Take me through your winners. Uh, we can go quick hockey talk. Sure. Which, to be honest, is kind of exactly how I felt about the Avs game with this Rangers Lightning game. I kind of think it's going to be the Lightning on the road. I would love to take them, but the Lightning play the Rangers today and the Islanders tomorrow on the road. So that is a New York slash New Jersey two game back to back road trip. So system play on the rangers even though i don't think that's going to win but i like points or i like goals i like the over there too which is now six and a half uh i also like the over in the stars leafs game kind of one in the same there which now that these teams have games under their belts you can feel more confident taking overs in these games uh and the wild blackhawks kind of a wash i, I wouldn't be shocked mm -hmm. to see the blackhawks sneak in that game and make it like a close plus one and a half ugly game but i will not be taking that so it's really all i got all I got is goals. Short card today. Short card. I don't know. Yeah. Schedule makers for the NHL are, are really – they always drop the ball. Mm. But okay. Bruce Lightning. The what about the goes. association? Association? Let's go to the association. I mean, I, I think my favorite play potentially on, on the slate for the NBA is, is the Hornets right now – or the Raptors right Whoa. now against the Hornets. Yeah. I'm minus seven. Like I said, there's not many times you can say a line feels large against the Hornets because they're a dog shit org over there, but – Kind of does in this game with uh, the worst defensive team in like the last two months in the Raptors who have been getting shit pumped by teams, including the Raptors or including the Hornets when they were playing in Charlotte. Uh, so I think they beat the shit out of the Hornets today. So I will be all over the Raptors. Um, and the more that I look at this Hawks-Celtics game with DeJounte being questionable, 
Uh, the spreads moved a little bit. Uh, you were sitting like 11 and a half. Now you're up to 12 and a half. Sure, that makes sense. But the total, relatively same spot. So, again, I'm going to wait until anything's official, but can probably say I'm going to be pivoting from the Celtics to that over. Maybe I'll hop mm-hmm. on the search stream if it becomes final there. Yeah. Um, but those are definitely my favorite looks. Do you have anything on the association yourself? Well, I was hoping I was going to find a Gary Trent free throw square up there again so we could get our revenge, but he is Gary. still maybe not going to play, but he's probable. That's what I'm seeing yeah. right now is most recent updates. So maybe, you know, in a couple of hours, I'll put that puppy back up. Let's keep our eyes peeled. All right. Um, that line is hilarious. If you ask me, the Toronto line laying that on the roads with that steam, I am so in for Toronto. I'd say that one stands out to me the most. Um, and then probably Wizards money line. <laughs> Well, you know what? Uh, top square in my, which I guess it's, it's probably going to be pretty popular today, if I had to guess, in uh, the NBA for a little sneak entry with Trent. Uh, Jared Allen is going to grub on the boards, yeah. which he, yeah. I think he's at 12 now. Like, Did we get some bumpage? Yeah, you got some bumpage. Whoa. I mean, Daniel Gafford. <laughs> Daniel Gafford is baby food down there. I kind of just autoplay, you know, any decent big against the, it's Wizards not right even now. his fault, dude. It's it's the rest of the team. Well, it's he it's also because they they have like nobody behind him either. Because like with Bagley hurt, you're playing small ball. Like he is literally time. barbecue chicken alert out there, left on a deserted island. I feel bad for yeah. Gaff. Gaff is not, not a tough. bad defender. I wouldn't say he's a great defenders. defender. Just, they just put him on an island, man. It's 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 not much he can do. But I know. Yeah, I mean, I think Jared Allen eats his lunch today. Yeah. Remember, all you gotta do is take the best players against the Wizards. So if you want to go Jared Allen rebounds, sure, that angle makes sense. If you want to go d points, I guarantee you that shit's max. Yeah, a lot of people on Garland today. Little nugget for Crabs here was doing some late-night lab work, and I texted Javon, and he said, holy shit, there's no way you said that. I have that pulled up right now. Drew Holiday assists. Go ahead and take a peek. Hmm. Not take a, a gander at that puppy. Not a play that I normally would take. It's not pretty at all. Yeah. Huh. It is uh, an interesting square. Whoa. Interesting. That looks yeah. like a free fate, doesn't it, Chats? Yeah, surely, you know, he's going to go less than his four and a half assists. I bet. Trent, that might be your sharpest work. Yes. I was trying to get into Javon's head because we were cooking oh my up goodness. a Rodman, a Stockton, an MJ, and a Curry. And I was looking for my, my Stockton. And this was the this and Draymond were between the two, and then I said, "Yo, Drew Holiday's looking at me funny." Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, he especially. Is. I mean, that, that could be that could be one that would work very well with buying a little bit of good news there with Dejounte either playing her or eventually being out too, because that's a pretty solid perimeter defender that could be seeing mm-hmm. time on Drew that maybe might not. So I mean, not to you need much help against the Hawks perimeter D, but he could be able to facilitate pretty easy. Yeah, as of right now, and by the way, Drew Holiday is questionable for this game with a right elbow sprain, yeah, but that was the we one, will see. That was the one roadblock you ran into, talking about that. We will see. I love that fucking square. I'm looking at DeJounte Murray updates, late addition to the injury report with lower back tightness. That sounds to me like he's not playing. Yeah, like kind of what, what I'm thinking. I don't think he's going to play, which could be huge. Okay. Fuck yeah, Trent. I want to take that with uh, Janai Broom and Xavier Johnson. Trent, man. I, I want to take that. Javon, what is your favorite square as of right now before we do the squad rides? Is it Janai Broom? Who is it? Well, you know, here's here's my big three of squares. It's Janai Broom, it's Jared Allen, and then it's Kate Cunningham, PA, which is also in that sneak. Yes. Yeah. Chat, strap in. We're fucking nuking a Cade masterclass tonight. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. He Holy is. shit. It's the Cade game. Holy shit. It's the Cade game, bro. Um, all right. Let me lock this shit in. I'm going to make a four geyser that's smacking. If you guys want to get involved, I know you guys probably already have slips, but um, let me see what we can craft up here. It starts out with Janai Brown. More than 29 and a half PRI. And then we get a Drew Holiday with Trent's sharpest square I've ever seen him pitch in my entire life. There's no fucking way I'm not telling that. I'm so in. I love it. 
more than four and a half assists. And then we get a Xavier Johnson, less than four and a half assists. That might be the nastiest college basketball square of the year. And that shit's hitting. And then we go to Cade Cunningham and the atrocious Moose Pistons. And Javon, which one are we taking for that? Points and assists. That's what we tell. Points and assists more than? Yep. Yeah, that is a nasty looking square as well. That's a four guys where I can get behind, I can support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see the square on board too. Or Wilson board. Jalen Brown threes, gross. That could be Drew Holiday WU correlation. Drew Holiday dishing to Jalen Brown for three. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? Oh, it's happening at least twice. Are you kidding yes, we me? Know, I'm we know that Katie's in there too. We're aware of K chat. Relax. Holy smokes. All right. Well, now this is a five piece. Fuck it. Here's what we got. I'm going to read this off and then we're going to do the squad ride. Okay, guys. Let me lock in Cade's more than points and assists, right, Javon? Yep. Here we go, chat. If you want this five piece, I'll tweet it out. You don't have to write it down, but here we go. Janai Broom, more than PRA. That's how we get it started. Then we go over to Drew Holiday and Jalen Brown. A little W correlation here. More than four and a half assists for Holiday. And uh, Jalen Brown, more than one and a half three-pointers made. Then we go to the nasty CBB fate. Xavier Johnson, less than four and a half assists. Okay? And then the take-me-home piece, Cade Cunningham, more than 29 and a half points and assists. Wow. It's a banger. Wow. It's a banger. That is a banger, dude. A oh, banger. my gosh. That might go five and out. You can make it a six piece with Jared Allen. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know. That one's, that one's got to be pretty corked today. I don't know if Krabs can put that one in there. I'm out on that one. I'm putting 500 bucks to win five racks on this. Chad, I'll tweet it out. All right. For now, we're already late. We're holding up Trent. Let's get that squad ride moving and grooving. Goods, run that shit. Chad. Can we stay hot on the squad rides? I don't know about you, but these are absolutely, I mean, they're paying my rent. The squad rides are paying my rent. They are unbelievably on fire. Knock on wood, so I don't jinx it. Let's make it 27 and 2 in the new year. Can we get win number 20 today, please? All right, ladies and gents. Javon, favorite play today. Go with the Raptors in Auburn. 1A, 1B. Putting Auburn down there below? Yep. Auburn, is it minus six now? Are you kidding me? Don't be afraid. Don't fear the juice and brace it, huh? Man, no juice. Taking minus six. That is true. Don't fear the fat spread. Embrace it. I'm in. As that spread continues to move, the more I, the more I like it. I'm with you. Okay. Uh, we got Toronto. We got Auburn. Man, I got some donkeys today too, brother. UNC Asheville, Northern Iowa, Drake. Any of those looking at you funny? Hmm. I mean, I, I like your cell jobs in all those plays. I feel like you just go with your gut, which ones are really screaming at you. You're not feeling any differently about them? Not feeling any differently. I like those right. plays pretty equally. All right. Then we're going to take UNC Asheville, and we're going to take Northern Iowa. I'm That's what that. my gut's telling me. I'm in for that. You can see Asheville plus two, UNI minus four and a half, I believe. Yep. Okay. One more play. What are we missing here? What's the play that's in the back of your mind right now that we need to put in this? Back of my mind. I will say it's too. I mean, I, I'm staring at that Hawks Celtics over now. It's just that's very injury dependent, potentially. Um, we could go to the ice, the over on the ice if you want. Leave stars over six and a half. Yeah. I like that. that sell job. I'm down to give the people a nice play. All right, chat. Here we go. We'll add the Leafs and the stars over six and a half. All right, chat. Five plays, five winners. You have one minute to lock in the squad ride vote. Everyone in here, lock the fuck in. We have 800 people. That should mean 800 votes, not rocket science. Simple math. Even I could do it. Lock in, hurry up, go, 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 go. Five plays, five winners on this beautiful Wednesday slate. People are talking, people are saying it might be better than Super Tuesday. And the people are mad. 
I'm saying. All okay. right. Five plays, five winners. Toronto minus seven and a half. Sure. Cannot believe that's not getting more votes. Auburn spreads. Seems like that's already at the cash counter. That scares me a little bit. UNC Asheville plus two. Nobody's going to vote for that, and it's going to win. UNI minus four and a half. Least voted play of the day. Just how I like it, to be honest with you, because I'm putting three units on it. How do I say I'm putting three units on a play? And it gets the least amount of votes. The disrespect in here. That's that sometimes. one might be might be air. The disrespect in here sometimes. I don't get it. I don't get it. What more do we have to do? How many more free winners do we have to give the people to put some respect on our names? And then closing it out with an, a hockey play that's not going to fucking win. Never was. It was always all minus six. Always was. On the spread. We Man knew it. Eagle. I'm cool with it. War damn eagle. All right. Auburn getting some revenge. Deny Broom getting some revenge. Cashing his PRA and taking us to the damn cash counter. All right. Like I said, ladies and gents, check out Chelly's recent tweets. Check out the tweets from Book It today about this poker tournament happening tomorrow night. Trent and Chelly are playing with some other celebs. And rumor has it they've been practicing up and playing some uh, some poker to prepare. So let's see how they do. All right. We got a big trip coming up this weekend in Vegas, but there will be a BTL tomorrow. Same time, same place. We'll be seeing, boys. Stick around for search stream.